Welcome to India, to Kerala. It's one of my favourite states in India. It's one of the, the the wonderful, most tropical states with fruits and spices, and lots of other、um, tropical plants. And I'd like to introduce you to a friend of mine, Jacob Jones from PDS Organic Spices in Kerala, and their story. Is one of the great inspiring stories in regenerative organic agriculture. They they're continuing a tradition that goes back for thousands of years. Kerala is the home of spices like cardamom and pepper, and for thousands of years they were trading with Mesopotamia and ancient Egypt and the Romans and the Arabs and finally to Europe.、Um, With the British and the Dutch and the Portuguese and others, the story here, where it is very inspiring, is that they're working with marginal smallholders, some of the lowest socio-economic groups of farmers in the world, and ensuring that they get a fair price, a good standard of living, and at the same time, they are also. Regenerating the environment and regenerating the community. So, Jacob, welcome, and I'll hand it over to you. Yeah, thank you, Andre,、uh, for your nice introduction. And good day to all.、Uh, myself,、uh, Jacob Jos, and Jos、uh, can pronounce in English and Jose in other languages. I'm from the Western Ghat part of uh, uh, in Kerala state in India.、Mm-hmm. Kerala is the southernmost state in India. And uh, uh, as Andre said,、uh, we have a rich heritage of spices trade with some of the ancient、uh, civilizations in the world, like the Babylonians, the Romans, the Egyptians, the Arabs, and later to the Europeans. And this place, the Western Ghat, is the home of the birthplace of some of the most important spices like pepper,、uh, turmeric, cardamom, etc. And、uh, this is the story of organic spices and organic、uh, spices farmers from this region. I represent an organization named the Pyramid Development Society. Pyramid is the name of this、uh, particular village where、uh, this organization is situated. And、uh, Pyramid Development Society, or rather known as PDS, is one of the largest NGO, non-governmental organization from the southern part of India, and it was established in the year 1980. And the mission of the organization is empowerment of village community, especially the marginal community, towards the sustainable development by conserving and enhancing the local resources in order to have the fullness of life. And uh, uh, the sustainability of the Western Ghat ecosystem is one of its prime ob- ob- objective、uh, towards achieving its mission. So, as I said, the Organization was established in 1980. At that time, the intense industrialized agricultural revolution, called the Green Revolution, was at its peak in、uh, in our region and、uh, generally in India. So all the scientists and agriculturalists were advising the farmers to apply more and more chemical fertilizers and pesticides to get more yield. The large-scale farmers were、uh, able to reap the benefit of this uh, uh, industrialization in agriculture. But as we know, in a country like India, more than 80% of the farmers are small and marginal farmers who are contributing to more than 50% of the country's food production. They were left behind in the scene due to their lack of resources and the unavailability of the technical knowledge about this industrialization. Also, the imprudent use of chemical pesticides and、uh, fertilizers cause severe damages in the sensitive agro ecosystem of the、uh, regions like West Bengal. So, PDS has foreseen this、uh, unsustainability of the green revolution at that time itself. So, in order to address the concerns of local food security, social and ecological issues, PDS has envisaged a holistic approach in the region. And the solution we found was regenerative organic agriculture, which aims to restore the farming ecosystem and soil health to improve the productivity in order to create sustainable、uh, food systems. So these are the peculiarities of the Western Ghat agriculture system. First of all,、uh, we are this is a hilly area and、uh, the terrain is highly slopy. And the Western Ghat is one of the topmost 
biodiversity hotspot in the world and 90% of the farmers are here are small and marginal farmers who are cultivating uh, spices like pepper, ginger, cardamom, nutmeg, etc. And there are some coffee farmers and tea is there, then rubber like that. Then uh, this area is highly vulnerable to the effects of climate change like droughts, soil erosion, uh, landslides and the resultant soil uh, acidity. So PDS promoted regenerative agriculture practices in harmony with the agroclimatic conditions in this particular region. And this is a philosophy of pyramid development society that they may have life and have it abundantly. It's taken from the Holy Bible, John 10. So we, we know that in most of the world's languages, organic farming is called life farming. Even in uh, most of the Indian languages, including my native languages, it is called Jaiva Krishi. Jaiva Krishi means Jaiva means life and Krishi means farming. So the life is an important uh, important concept in the farming, in the organic farming. So as a result of pyramid development society's activities, by mid uh, 80s, we could able to gather a group of uh, around 250 to 300 farmers. So PDS established the PDS Organic Spices Unit to aggregate this uh, group of small farmers. And again, the problem with the, uh, the sustainable price purposes. So in order to address that, we certified that farmers in order to align with the international organic uh, movement. And we uh, connect this uh, group of farmers with the international organic market. Thereby, the farmers are, were able to get a fair price for their uh, produce and there we started a phase of localization localization means connecting the global customers with the genuine local producers we are uh, working with three uh, t's as our core principles that is trust traceability and transparency so this uh, traceability uh, for us this traceability is not a one-sided one we know that as for the international uh, food safety and food security laws, the consumer has to know where their uh, food uh, are coming from, uh, who are the producers of their food. But uh, that is, we consider that is a one-sided approach. For us, the producers also has the right to know who is consuming their produce and who is purchasing their produce and at what price the producers are being purchased. We consider that as an important part and we consider the traceability as a two-way communication too. And the transparency and trust is also based on that two-way communication between the uh, customers and the producers. And this is PDS Organic Spices is now. We are one of the top most exporter of organic spices from India since 1998. And we are working with around 2,500 small and marginal organic farmers from this region, Iriki district region, who are cultivating spices like pepper, ginger, turmeric, clove, nutmeg, cardamom, etc. And we have a well-established internal control farm extension system and research and development wing in order to support these uh, small and marginal farmers. And we have almost all the major international organic quality certifications like uh, Indian Organic, European Union, Japan, Korea, and we have some specialized certifications like Demeter, Biosis, Naturaland, all those kind of fair trade, all those kind of certifications we have. And below the slide, you can see the wholesale catalog of one of our major customers in USA. And on that catalog, the cover picture is one of our farmer with the, his family. So this is an important aspect. Almost all our customers our, our companies are coming to India and coming to our places and they are visiting our farmers field and they are interacting with the farmers family and there uh, arises a bond between the, the consumers and the producers. Also the producers, the farmers who are from the rural villages who are less educated, less privileged, the farmers are feeling very proud that uh, a foreigner or a, an international buyer is coming to my farm and visiting my family and uh, seeing my farming activities and all. So his level of self-esteem got elevated. And that is a, uh, like we can so, uh, say, a social aspect of this kind of activity. And these are the sustainable agriculture practices we are following. 
the regenerative practices we are following is based on three aspects the soil health regeneration water management and biodiversity uh, protection so the regenerative farming practices led by the pds farmers focused on managing soil biodiversity rather than soil uh, fertility these practices include soil fertility assessment using our own uh, technicians and our own laboratory systems and almost all our farmers 99% of our farmers they are following mixed crop cultivation you can see at least 25 to 30 varieties of uh, species of plants in their field and uh, of course the farmers are avoiding the chemical fertilizers and uh, they are using quality organic uh, inputs in order to uh, ensure the authenticity of the uh, supply chain. Then uh, the farmers are ensuring maximum soil cover in order to uh, protect the soil from the erosion and the landslides, etc. And they are planting vetiver plants in order to uh, save the uh, soil from the erosion. Then uh, we are providing a lot of capacity building programs, awareness and capacity building programs to the farmers. Then the farmers are using stone burns, gildi plugging, etc., to uh, protect their land. Then water management. The water scarcity is very common in the hilly areas of this district. With the northern parties experiencing frequent droughts and uh, rain shadow conditions. In recent years, the digging of wells and bore wells has led to a decline in groundwater level in our region. Also, the farmers are relaying the monsoon for water. The monsoon is for almost uh, four to six months here. The farmers are completely relying on this monsoon for their water. And the life cycle of the spices, this completely depends on the seasonal climatic condition. So these are the uh, water management mechanisms our farmers are adopting in the farmers. First of all, in almost all the farms, they have installed the rainwater harvesting and water recharging mechanisms. Then uh, with the help of uh, some agencies, the PDS is implementing the watershed management mechanisms and farmers are maintaining soil cover, then uh, renovation of uh, abundant water resources then river conservation, water budgeting programs we are uh, implementing in the field. Then the next is biodiversity protection. With the help of some international agencies, we are uh, implementing a biodiversity action plan in the Western Cut uh, region. So the awareness programs and the training capacity building programs are part of that. Then we have uh, assessed and we have prepared a baseline record of soil micro population in almost uh, all our farmers land. Then uh, the farmers are prior protecting and in, uh, enhancing the climate resilient local varieties. As I said, this is a birthplace of uh, most of the spices like pepper, ginger, uh, turmeric, etc. So we can see a variety of traditional and uh, local varieties in this region. So for our farmers are taking special care to preserve and protect this kind of climate resilient local and traditional varieties. <coughs> then uh, they are promoting the pollinators and predators using the local plants. Then uh, of course avoiding the use of chemical herbicides and pesticides. Then uh, we can see, uh, we can say that there are a lot of traditional knowledge about this biodiversity conservation and the climate smart agriculture practices. In almost all our trainings, there is a session is dedicated to share the knowledge, the traditional knowledge of the farmers among uh, themselves. <clears throat> then they are protecting the medicinal plants in the region. So these are the processing facility in our plant. Uh, you can see in the below picture, the plant is located on the very serene places away from all the pollutions. See, why we have a state-of-the-art processing center which is dedicated to organic spices processing and it is certified uh, to the organic uh, spices processing. And we have the latest cleaning, grading, sterilization facilities and it is adhering to almost all the international food safety and hygiene standards as prescribed by the uh, national law and our bias. And we have international internal uh, quality assurance laboratory inside our facility. Then we have a soil plant and water testing laboratory for the farmers. There the farmers can avail the soil plant and water testing as free of cost. And our technicians will give advices to the farmers uh, in order to uh, farming practices. You can see these are the some of uh, our some of the pictures of our processing facility. Uh, the sterilization system, the laboratory, uh, the container bay, uh, the loading area, etc. 
And this is our global reach. We are exporting to almost all parts of the world, like the USA, European, uh, Europe, and uh, African countries, the GCC, then Japan, Korea, Australia, etc. And this is our R&D division. As we know, in a country like India, lack of the farm extension system is one of the important challenges the farmers are facing. So in order to address this issue, we established a good farm extension system. And this R&D division and soil plant and water testing lab is part of that. There we have a good uh, plant, organic uh, plant uh, nursery. The farmers can uh, purchase or uh, farmers can avail these uh, seedlings, uh, sometimes on free of cost, other times on cost to cost basis, they can purchase from there. Also the soil plant and water testing laboratory, they can avail services on free of cost. And we have a compost making center there. And this is the training center. There we have a facility for the practical and theoretical training for the farmers. And these are some, some of the capacity building programs to make the traditional uh, the organic uh, preparations and uh, the some of the biodiversity uh, awareness programs like that. You can see the photos of that. And this is the rainwater harvesting system in our processing facility. We are 100 percent water neutral in our operations. We are saving the water uh, during the monsoon season and we are using that it for the other uh, some, summer seasons for our operations. And we are issuing the soil testing and uh, the soil health card to all our farmers after the testing in our laboratory. And you can see this is a model of the uh, soil health card issued to one of our farmers. And this is another important aspect in our uh, uh, way of uh, empowering the farmers, valuing and rewarding the ecosystem services by the organic farmers. We have identified uh, and listed the major ecosystem services provided by the organic farmers in the region that includes the carbon sequestration, water conservation and storage uh, systems in their farms, then promoting pollinators using the uh, flowering plants and uh, traditional uh, medicinal plants, then biodiversity enhancement, then soil microbe enhancement, then prevention of air water pollution and safe and nutritional food they are providing to the customers, then regulation of agriculture's uh, GHG emissions. So PDS Organic Spices is rewarding the farmers by paying an organic premium uh, to the farmers. That means we are purchasing the each and every kilogram of the spices by paying 10 to 15 percentage of additional premium price than the market price. So the farmers are getting a sustainable income and uh, it's a uh, rewarding system for the farmers. And these are some of the exclusive models our farmer group is following. First of all, we are reducing the carbon uh, emission uh, using efficient resource utilization. We are adopting modern uh, technology in our all our operations. Then we have done carbon sequestration analysis in almost all our farms. Then we have a pooled purchase system. As I said, uh, the Idiki district or the area of operation is spread across more than 150 square kilometer of area. So a farmer, a small farmer from a farm far away region, if he wanted to uh, bring the product from his farm to our factory, he has to hire a vehicle and the cost also will be very high for his, him. So what we are doing is that we have a decentralized purchase system. We have unit offices in every nook and corner of the region. The farmers can bring their product up to the nearest unit offices. Our uh, purchase team will go there and they will collect the materials. In that way, we can reduce the carbon footprint and the farmers can save the money for the transportation. Then the operations are water neutral and energy efficient. Then uh, the, all the on-farm operations, purchase, storage, processing and transportation, we are monitoring the carbon footprint and uh, as far as possible, uh, we are uh, con we are confirming that the operations will be energy efficient and water neutral. Then another method, another uh, model is eco economization. That is transforming the ecological conservation activity to economic activity. And this is one of the um, uh, examples of that eco economization activity. Uh, this is a woman activity, a woman uh, vetiver micro enterprise uh, unit. 
uh, we can see this kind of grass everywhere in the region. The grass is called vetive. Uh, the farmers are traditionally using this to prevent the soil erosion. And the root of the plant is an Ayurvedic medicine and that is using in the cosmetic industry. Uh, actually, there were no particular use uh, for this grass. But we found a use uh, for this grass. We trained a group of 50 women from our farmer's family to make a basket, a vetiver basket like this. And uh, we are purchasing bike, this basket from these ladies. And we are incorporated that in our spices supply chain as a spice gift box. So now the ladies can use their free time to make this kind of basket. And that is an additional income for these ladies. Also, the farmers are more encouraged to plant this vetiver uh, grass in their field so that they are getting an additional income through this ecological conservation activity. And this is another interesting program by the Pyramid Development Society. This is Land to Love program. When we are thinking about innovation, it's always uh, like uh, something invented in the laboratory or inside the classroom and which is giving bike or giving down to the uh, the, the field or to the small, small and marginal farmers. But this is a reverse approach. This is a bottom up approach where we are considering the farmers as the best innovators. Our technicians are going to the field and they are identifying the some of the innovations found by the farmers and they are taking back to the lab and we are, they are just polishing it and uh, uh, giving back to the farmers with all the IPR and uh, all the purpose so that the farmers can make that as micro enterprises. And these are some examples of that kind of farmer innovations like uh, uh, the first one is a pepper variety invented by Mr. Varghese. The second one is also another pepper variety. And uh, the last one, you can see the coffee variety. Then we have nutmeg variety, cardamom varieties. Other than the span varieties, we have some uh, small scale machineries and farm equipments like that. There were a lot of more than hundreds of innovations we have identified. So the speciality of this kind of program, the advantage is that the farmers are inventing or farmers are uh, innovating uh, as per their needs, which is really persistent in the region. So this is localized solution for the localized needs and which are found to be very effective than something uh, which is uh, introduced in the farm from outside. And these uh, are the awards and recognitions we got from uh, various institutions like we were the topmost exporter of organic spices from India from 2002 to 2008. Then we have got the International Micro Entrepreneurship Award from Paris 2014. Then we have got International Pepper Community Award from 2017. So as a conclusion, uh, I would say these are the learnings uh, we got uh, through our operations uh, for the last 25 years. First of all, the regenerative agricultural practices ensure the sustainability of the agroecological system, which lead to the revival of local agroeconomy and the quality of life for the farmer community. The second is well-established farm extension system. Ensure the integrity of the supply chain, organic supply chain. And the major su success of the organization is its futuristic outlook and the ability to align with the global changes. So big thank you from our smiling, beautiful farming uh, woman, farmer woman. Thank you. Um, Jacob, I just want to thank you for that. And just talk about a few of the issues that you brought up. Now, one of the ones I found very inspiring is looking at the farmer developed varieties of pepper, the um, cardamom, the nutmeg, and the coffee. Now, for instance, you know, I, I grow all, all of these here, but I was looking at some of the, um, the pepper and the size of the, um, of, of, of the pods with all the uh, pepper on it. It, 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 the three varieties there are quite spectacular. Similarly, when I could see the nutmegs, right, I thought right, either, right. E either they're very small farmers <laughs> or, yeah, 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 or, or, or they're big nutmegs. And, and uh, yeah. what, what, I suppose what I like about it is what you're doing here is the way that we should be developing food crops and it's not in a research station under a right. hothouse, but in the field no. and farmers 
carefully selecting the best that are best adapted, yes. the best quality. Yeah. And so a, as a result now, are other farmers um, taking up these varieties now in, in Kerala and growing them and getting the good results? Yes. Yes, of course. Actually, uh, the thing is that in Kerala uh, or in our area itself, the microclimatic conditions are totally different. So the, uh, we can say uh, most of the time the agriculture researchers are not considering this fact. They are just generalizing the agriculture system in their state or in the district. And they are just developing a variety which is suitable for the generic agriculture conditions. But the farmers know the real fact. They know uh, the microclimatic conditions or micro, micro agro uh, systems in their particular region. So they are developing these kind of varieties based on that. So the nearby farmers, they are also getting benefited through this kind of innovations by these farmers. So now actually for the inventor, it is, uh, we can say it's a micro enterprises. The other farmers can purchase this kind of uh, plants and uh, it is a mutually uh, benefited. It's a win-win situation for the, the purchaser and the, the enterpriser. So other farmers, uh, what uh, the benefit is that is first of all, it's a climate resilient variety and they are getting more yield than the institutional varieties. And uh, the, the other uh, guy who is selling is getting a fair income through this activity. So it's a win-win situation for both of the farmers. Uh, to me, that's a, a, a wonderful story. It's also the way that we should be developing it. What we have found all around the world is that by using these, uh, developing these uh, varieties locally, they're better adapted, not just to the climate, to the soil, to organic agriculture. They can take weed pressure, whereas the commercial varieties, they are developed to need high amounts of water, high amounts of right. um, water soluble fertilizers, and they need high amounts of pesticides because they've got no resistance to uh, pests and right. diseases. So the only way that you get a yield off them is by spending a fortune on all mostly toxic inputs. Whereas we find with these varieties, they've been developed on organic farms to thrive in organic conditions. And that's why they are so superior and why they, they do yeah. well in organic farms. Uh, in India, what is happening is that, uh, let me just add to one more point. In India, what is happening is that the institutions are mainly focused on this kind of uh, uh, the nutritional input, uh, uh, like uh, very high input intensive varieties, which needs a lot of inputs from outside. But the farmers, they are feeling that we have been, they have been practicing this organic farming for last 30, 35 years. And in their observations, they are saying, uh, they are feeling that there are some varieties, especially the pepper, which, has, which are automatically evolved such that they need, uh, they are adjust to the organic uh, way of farming, automatically adjust to the organic uh, way of farming. We can say that such, that is a natural selection and which are more adapted to the organic method of farming. And we are uh, like, uh, we are planning to invest more to document this kind of uh, organically adapted plants. And that's also another interest, interesting point. I'm, I'm pleased to hear this because the other part of the story with the commercial varieties that need high amounts of inputs is that um, the farmers n normally have to borrow money for that and they borrow it from really right. loan sharks at very high amounts yeah. and usually because they can't afford to the cost of getting the amount of pesticides and fertilizers they need they never get enough and their yields are always low. Plus, you know, they say so at the end of the um, season, they don't get the same yield, they don't get the same price, but what they have is the debt. And that keeps them in poverty. Whereas what you're doing, the farmers don't need to go into debt for these high inputs. Oh, right, and, right. 
So they get a better return, not just in yield, but in income. Exactly. Exactly. So just like also the, through the yeah, yeah. please. Just also through our support system, yeah. Also through our support system and our farm extension system, we are giving good quality organic inputs like uh, the compost, uh, our traditional uh, micro like uh, micro fertilizers, organic micro fertilizers. And some of our traditional preparations, like you know, the Panchakavya, Jiva, Murda, Harida Kashayam, etc. So, we have a research and development division. They are developing this and uh, they are giving the farmers on cost to cost basis. So, and once in a year, we are giving us free of cost. So, other than the monetary benefit, uh, this is also, uh, we can say, a rewarding mechanism, a rewarding mechanism to the farmers, not monetary. Uh, rewarding mechanism to the farmers so that the farmers can reduce they can highly reduce the input cost and uh, whatever money they, they are getting uh, that will become a sustainable income or uh, saving for these farmers whereas the conventional farmers if they found some disease or something they have to always run to the nearest uh, chemical shop and they have to get the advice from the uh, the seller the chemical pesticide seller and they have to buy that they have to apply that it's all there. But for us, what is happening is that we have an ICS system, internal control system. Uh, we have 14 member staff is there. They're always there in the field with the farmers. And they are, these staffs are always approachable to the farmers. And they are giving the regular advices and uh, they are regularly monitoring the farmer's field. And if there is a, some issue, they can immediately contact our uh, internal control uh, manager or internal control staff and uh, they will directly contact the technicians in our our uh, factory or our office and they will give uh, the remedy immediate remedy to these farmers so in a way the farmers is more efficient and farmers can reduce time and cost of the farming the other part of what your program that i was really impressed with is the payment for ecosystem services and that includes you know carbon dioxide drawdown yeah but also for biodiversity, for uh, water management, for um, store health. The, I, I really like the, the criteria that you use. So if you could just talk a little bit about that and explain that, because I think for us and Regeneration International, this is actually one area that we actually want to turn into a larger project is having farmers pay a premium for ecosystem services, and you're doing it, yeah. which is very impressive. Yeah. So first of all, uh, it is a biodiversity conservation. Uh, it is not only the interspecies, the interspecies biodiversity the farmers are protecting, it's also the interspecies biodiversity. As I said, this is a birthplace of some of the most important spices like pepper and cardamom. There are a lot of indigenous or local varieties of plants are there. The farmers are taking special care to protect this kind of uh, locally adapted variety along with the high yielding variety. So if you are going to a farmer's field, with the pepper variety itself, you can see at least five or six varieties of pepper, different kinds of pepper in one farm. And uh, the, that's the same as the case with all the other uh, spices like uh, whether it be nutmeg or cardamom or turmeric or any other uh, spices and also we can see some coffee or some uh, tea uh, trees and coconut some vegetables for their own consumption like that you can see at least 30 35 varieties of uh, species in one farm including large trees to small bushes uh, including medicinal plants the vegetable plants etc so our, we are uh, uh, giving prime importance to these kind of things and we are giving awareness programs to the farmers and also about the carbon sequestration we have estimated the carbon sequestration in almost all our farmers field uh, using the uh, modern tools and we have estimated that on an average it is estimated that 120 to 150 metric ton of carbon is sequestered above the soil and 30 to 35 metric ton under the soil in each of the farms also, we have assessed the soil microbes population in our uh, farmer's field. And this is found that the soil microbe population and organic carbon contact 
when we are comparing to the nearby conventional farm it is highly uh, it is very high in the in the organic farm so these are the kind of services also uh, as i said this area is one of the ecologically fragile area and most important biodiversity hotspot in the region so the conservation of pure air and water is utmost important in this region and our farmers are giving prime importance and they are contributing very high to in this aspect uh, preserving their uh, preserving the like uh, fresh air and water compared to the other uh, chemical farmers there are some belts in our region some particular pockets in our region where uh, some spices like uh, cardamom or some other kind of spices are cultivated if you are just walking through the farms we can see that our skin and our eyes are get just getting a burnt like a burning effect because they are applying the pesticides and there are a huge amount of pesticide content in that atmosphere whereas when we are going to our farmers our organic farmers field we can see that there's a cool air and fresh air and water is also very fresh so this is all we can really experience so these are the kind of services our farmers are giving and we are giving monetary and non monetary rewarding monetary rewarding means uh, we are giving the premium price that is always 10 to 15 percentage above the market price as you know the the prices of the spices are highly fluctuating throughout the year uh, for example for pepper uh, right now the price is 600 indian rupees but before uh, last year, the same time, the price was just 400 uh, Indian rupees. So we cannot predict tomorrow what will be the price. So throughout the year, what we are doing is that we are ensuring a benchmark price, a minimum price for the farmers. Whatever low be the price, we will give that price. And whatever high be the price, we will give that high price plus premium. So that there is a, there is a security always there is a security a price security for the farmers so that they can they can relay the, the agriculture for their their uh, their needs their children needs or their uh, family needs etc and non monetary benefits we are giving is the training activity the agriculture extension activity and this kind of uh, good agriculture uh, inputs organic inputs we are giving to the farmers also, the farmers can buy uh, the seedlings, the spices seedlings on coast-to-coast -coast basis. These are all non-monetary benefits uh, we are giving to the farmers. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jacob, I actually want to thank you for this because what you're doing is very important. You know, at, at the moment, um, for instance, we have um, places like the Netherlands trying to close down farming because of climate change. Um, um, places like uh, New Zealand and Ireland and other places, everybody is starting to tax farmers. And, you know, we have very good data. The farming is responsible between 30 to up to 50 percent of greenhouse gas emissions. What you're showing is that we can actually be greenhouse gas negative by actually um, drawing down the greenhouse gases. The other really important thing is that agriculture is actually responsible for something like 80% of deforestation, most of the biodiversity lost on the planet. And you're showing that you can regenerate this biodiversity. And the last point I really want to make is this. It's um, people say, oh, you know, we've got to have less farmers. We, we can't have smallholder farmers are not viable. Um, you know, we, we can't have ecological outcomes and farming outcomes. And you're saying, yes, we can. And not only that, we can actually provide better incomes for farmers, their communities, revitalize them, bring life back, um, you know, make sure these people have a good standard of living. So for me, your story is such an important one and that's why I, you know i really want to have this highlighted in our people summit so it's not just in kerala kerala but other farmer groups can 
see what you're doing and, and you can inspire the world. So I want to say thank you and actually look forward to returning to Kerala and visiting your farms. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Andre. You're most welcome. You're most welcome to our farms. Okay, well, thank you. And uh, I look forward to being in contact.